Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to answer your questions directly about Vietnam. Now this was supposed to be a live video, but two problems happened. One, I'm in Vietnam right now. So the time difference for a lot of you that watch this is 12, 13 hours off meeting. It's probably 2 a.m. when I'm recording this on your time. And two, it is 39 degrees outside. We're not going to the park today. So we're gonna do this inside, record it. I've written down all your questions. I actually wrote down 40 of them. There's like 53 of them, but I wrote down 40 of them. Today, I'm going to answer these questions in like t seven, 10 minutes and just kind of jet through them real quick, give you honest perspectives of them, not getting too detailed, but just giving you the broad, quick answer that most people are just looking for. So without further ado, guys, let's not waste time. Let's get into it and let's look at question number one. How easy is it to get around Vietnam as a tourist? If you are a tourist out here in Vietnam and you're just trying to get around the city like Saigon or Hanoi, it's stupid easy. Uh, you just want to download the app Grab and just take motorbike taxis or just normal taxis wherever you're going. If you're traveling between cities, Da Nang to Da Lat to Hanoi to again Saigon, just take a sleeper bus. In, in all of transportation within Vietnam is super easy to get anywhere. It's not as, it's not modern and it's not safe for say, you'll understand what I'm talking about if you're here. But it's definitely not the most preferable way to get around, but definitely it is easy to get around Vietnam. Number two, the best way to learn Vietnamese. To learn Vietnamese is stupid easy. Um, if you're living here, this could be really easy. Let me get you guys straight here. If you guys are living here, my advice is to find out what you do a lot of. If you go to bars a lot, if you go to markets a lot, if you hang out with friends and talk about engineering a lot, find out what the top like 30, 40 words are for the vocabulary relative to that so how i learned vietnamese fluently like i spoke it growing up in america but it was more slangy like american vietnamese is not the same as vietnam vietnamese it's very different there's a lot of slang it's kind of like spanglish but with vietnamese but when i got here what i did was i learned about a hundred some words relative to food and how to buy stuff at the market and within like three or four months like i was speaking southern vietnamese pretty much fluently so learn the basic vocabulary of what it is and get out there don't do this like watching lessons and reading books i've seen a lot of videos online where people are like well i write every day i have a notebook full of vietnamese handwriting like f all that like f all that. that that's a waste of time a lot of vietnamese are illiterate not an insult it's the truth a lot of vietnamese cannot read and write correctly so for you to master the skill and not be a citizen is kind of you're going too far Learn the basics of whatever you're trying to talk about. My advice is learn the basics of go to a market. Learn the foods, how to say cho toi, which is like uh, give me or to choi, give, I give you, vice versa. And just keep communicating with these people and you'll gradually build your vocabulary. And that's how I did it. Like within a couple months, man, I think four at most, I was speaking about everything. So that's the best way to learn that. What qualifications do I need to be an English teacher? Very simple, you have to have a business degree. I'm sorry, you have to have a four-year degree. It could be a business, it doesn't matter, but it has to be a four-year degree. There is no working without a degree in Vietnam. Check out my other videos. I've broken this down in regards to legal law. It's impossible. If anyone says otherwise, they're, they're just selling you a lie. I don't care if they're a lawyer. There's a lot of lawyers that are on YouTube that are Vietnamese that are lying to you. Their, their video subs up to like, get married to Vietnam, stay long-term. You have to get married out here or have a work permit to stay in Vietnam past six months. There's no other way around it. Uh, but past the degree, you need a TEFL. Check the link below. It's like 15% off. It never expires. It's issued from the country of Thailand or the kingdom of Thailand, rather. And it's accepted in Vietnam. It's accepted all over Southeast Asia. And again, it doesn't expire. What are the best and worst things about teaching in Vietnam? Um, here we go. Vietnam is a country of cheating, shortcuts, and facades. There is nothing real in Vietnam. If you know a lot about China, if you've seen like ADV China, stuff like that, how they're always talking about everything's fake and tofu buildings and all this and that this is vietnam vietnam and china are so so similar yet you can't mention it because the people will get violent you know what i mean but the worst things about teaching is again the cheating cheating is very very normal in vietnam like the first thing adults or children do when it comes to tests or questions is they look at their neighbor as quick as possible they don't even attempt to try so if you're a serious teacher you're gonna be a little, you're gonna be angry, you're gonna be disappointed, you might be upset if you're like a real teacher because no matter how hard you try, the parents don't care. The schools are gonna give fake grades to meet a quota and the students just won't care because why would a son or daughter care if their parents don't even care, you see what I mean? 
The best parts of it, though, is it is definitely an exciting experience. My first couple years teaching English when I was in Saigon, when I first moved here, were awesome. Like, it is nothing that you'll ever experience in any other country. It is not comparable to Thailand, Japan, uh, South America. It's not even comparable to America or anything. It is a very different culture that's definitely worth looking into. And it's just fun, man. Like, the best thing about teaching, I think, is you meet the locals. You start hanging out with TAs and stuff like that, and they start taking you to their hometowns to visit their families, and you start seeing things that most people never see. And people that do actually become teachers, I always recommend to them, make friends with your staff. When they go out to these parties and stuff, go with them, like 100%. Because they'll show you things that Western people would never, they wouldn't even know what to look for to get to this stuff. So check that out. What are some of the common interview questions for teaching jobs in Vietnam? Typically, the questions are stupid. I'm not going to lie. They, they'll just ask you, what have you done before? That's kind of it. Like, I've had interviews with, like, bigger schools where Western people interviewed me. And they'll ask you, like, situational questions. That, that's typically it. Like, if the kid's really bad, what do you do? If you have half your class that's mentally, like, mentally lost, what do you do? And th these are kind of the questions. The answer is always, like, you... you, you kind of just focus on the class and you help the child the best you can and you adjust the learning style for each student. Like answers like this always get the job done. But yeah, most of the questions are just ridiculous. If, as long as you get past those like three or four questions they ask you, which is usually just three or four questions, you'll do a demo lesson where it answers all the other questions that they would have about you. How affordable is living in Vietnam compared to the other countries? I saw this question. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if what you guys are talking about. Like other countries in Asia or like America? Like compared to the West, it's dirt cheap. Compared to the rest of Asia, it's a little more expensive. Vietnam isn't the cheapest country if you're in the main cities. If you get out to the farm sites, like the lot, stuff like that, it do, you can live out here for like two, three hundred dollars. Like if you're if you're married in Vietnam and you live in like the lot or font, you can live on like two hundred fifty dollars a month. It's ridiculous. This is paying for rent and everything. But in general, if you're making, if you have about seven hundred a month, which the average salary is about eleven hundred dollars. If you have 700 a month, you're living good. You're all right. You got transportation. You can buy your own bike even. You'll have a place to live. You'll be eating every night. If you're an alcoholic, you're served. Smoking is like 10 cents a pack. Like everything is super cheap out here. Are the locals friendly and welcoming to expats? This is a fun question. You see a lot of videos on how Vietnamese are the nicest people in the world. But if you go to Malaysia, they say the same thing. If you go to Thailand, they say the same thing. Vietnam is the same as all of them. The Vietnamese are going to be super nice to you in tourist areas because they want your money, bro. Like in general, Vietnamese are somewhat nice. Like they're not, they're, it's like America. Like some Americans are nice, some are horrible people, right? Vietnam is kind of the same. But what I have noticed, if you're in tourist areas like District 1, uh, 2, or 7 in Saigon, if you're in Hanoi, like Old Town area, if you're in like Da Nang, uh, Nha Trang, if you're in, uh, what's another one? Vung Tao is another one. The Vietnamese are going to be a lot nicer because it's a heavy tourist area. I mean, if a Vietnamese is running around yelling at you, you're not going to buy shit from them. They're going to not make money, right? So that is something to consider. Once you get out of the main cities and tourist areas, though, Vietnamese can... It's hit and miss, man. Some of them are just complete a-holes. I would say living in countrysides of Vietnam, because I've, I've lived in like 20 different like cities outside of major cities, 20, 25 different. I would say... 65 70 percent of the time people are just a-holes and they're not directly rude it's more of like they just don't they're not aware of what's going on around they'll bump into you they'll, they'll spit around you they'll smoke right in your face they don't know this is rude they don't know that it's annoying to other people they just do it because it's normal in their culture so i wouldn't say that they're intentionally rude but you will get people that are rude. Like taxi drivers outside the big city are some of the, dude, I thought New York was bad. Like these people are rude. Like they will just yell at you. They'll, they'll spit all over the place and smoke in the car while you're there. If you tell them to stop, they'll be like, get that to my car. When you've already paid through like credit card or something. So it, it's hit and miss. If you're in a tourist area though, don't worry about it. Most Vietnamese are pretty chill. Like they, they are actually really nice. Um, how safe is Vietnam for foreigners? It, it's safe. Um, I've talked about this a few times. The, the serious, Vietnam has some of the most darkest crime in Southeast Asia. But as a foreigner, you will never run into this stuff. If you've seen um, these movies, if you saw that movie that came out last year about the Mexican CIA guy that went to like down to Mexico to save the girl from child stuff, that kind of stuff is not uncommon in Vietnam. I, I can't get into a lot of this because I know who watches this video, but... As foreigners, you guys don't deal with this. So when it comes to being safe with foreigners, yeah. Typically, pickpocketing at most is what you'll deal with. And then just the crime of being too noisy. That, that's really it. 
Uh, one of the most popular cities for expats to live in Vietnam. To live, Saigon, Hanoi, 100%. To live long term, uh, Da Nang. I think Da Nang is one of the best cities in Vietnam. I, on top of that comment, I think Hanoi is one of the worst cities in all of Asia. So, it, did I say Hanoi or did I say Vietnam? But Hanoi. So it really depends, but typically people stay in Hanoi and Saigon because that's where most of the work is. The Russian population and the older Western people typically are in Da Nang because that's where you can kind of do, it feels Western out there. Like I think Da Nang is a beautiful city. It really is. But here's where all the Vietnamese get angry at me. It lacks Vietnamese culture. It, it's very Westernized. It's very Russianized per se. Like it has that Russian vibe to it. And it's because during, the, after the Cold War, a lot of Russians came to Vietnam. This is actually where you'll meet Vietnam where you'll meet Russians that have Vietnamese citizenships. This is a rarity in Vietnam history, but it happens there. So Da Nang is definitely one of the best cities. If you look at YouTube videos of like other people saying the best spot in Vietnam, it's typically Da Nang. Uh, and, and I agree hundred percent. So that is probably the most popular, but if you're coming out for the first time, you're probably gonna wanna go to Saigon or Hanoi. How easy is it to travel within Vietnam and to other countries in Southeast Asia? Oh, super easy. Go to the airport, get a flight. Most flights are like 20 to $50. You can fly anywhere. It's not hard. Being in Vietnam is actually kind of cool because you're, you're right in the middle of everything. You can go to the Philippines, Japan, uh, China if you don't value life. Go to Thailand, Cambodia, Laos. Um, I would, Malaysia. I, I'm not a fan of Malaysia. We've talked about it before, but you could go there. Uh, Singapore's right down the way. Indonesia. Vietnam is an awesome spot. Like, it's kind of a hub. It's kind of like the Los Angeles of the, of the U.S. when it comes to Asia. Like, it's just in the middle of everywhere. Uh, what is the food like in Vietnam? It is it is extremely dirty. It's poisonous. It's unhealthy. And you'll probably give you cancer. Check my old videos on that. The reason I say that is the way that food out here is handled and processed and handled, really. Um, Vietnam has to be some of the dirtiest food I've ever seen in Asia. But how does it taste? It's amazing. I think Vietnam food actually tastes some of the best. But yeah. Don't live on it. How is the healthcare system in Vietnam? Go to Thailand. I, I think healthcare in Vietnam is pretty shitty. Saigon does have an, a hospital. I forget the name of it. I think it's called IF or something like that. It's a French hospital. It's an international hospital. It's quite expensive, but that's the best healthcare in all of Vietnam. It's better than anything you'll find in Hanoi. It's a French-owned hospital. I think it's in District 1 or 3. I, I forget. Like You guys can let me know in the comments. But that is the best spot to go. They can they can do cancer treatment there. Like they're one of the few hospitals. They're the only hospital in Vietnam that has that. And the doctors are French, European, Americans. A lot of American money. I forget the program that America calls it, but they send money to Vietnam financially for medical research and practice. It goes to that hospital. So, and there is that process. But ninety nine percent of the time, you just go to Thailand. Like it's healthcare here is not good. What is the visa process like for foreigners living in Vietnam? Um, e visas, 100%, three months, six months. Typically, after six months, they make it very hard for you to return. So, if you're doing visa runs, it, it's gonna get tricky. But if you're here for six months, man, just get a, get a job. Like, you only need to work like 35 or 40 hours a month, which is like super part time. Like, dude, that's 10 hours a week, man, teaching. So, that means you're just teaching like what, four, five, six classes a, a week, like at like an hour and a half each. So, super quick, and that'll get you a work permit to stay out here long term. But doing visa runs, it's over. Like, it, they've made it so difficult after six months. And understand, six months is a cutoff for Thailand, for Malaysia, for, no, not Singapore. Uh, Thailand, Malaysia, and Laos actually have cutoffs. So after six months, you have to leave the country for six months before you can return. So Viet Vietnam doing this isn't abnormal. It's actually, they're doing it late. Uh, can I find work in Vietnam without speaking Vietnamese? 100%. I don't, I don't think you need to actually speak Vietnamese ever. Like I've lived in some wild spots in Vietnam and I've never needed to speak Vietnamese. I've lived in Hmong communities and villages in, in Lai Cho, like way Northwest of Vietnam and never needed to speak Vietnamese. Could I, I can understand it, but I've never needed to. And I'll, I'll put this out here because a lot of people ask me why I don't speak Vietnamese a lot. Once you learn Vietnamese, you start hearing what people say. But most Vietnamese just gossip. They bullshit, they talk shit. So for me, that's a waste of time. Like when I talk to people, I'm talking about investing, working, improving, self-improvement, stuff like that. But when I hang out with my Vietnamese friends, it's always complaining about somebody. It's always gossiping about what they bought or somebody else bought. It's like, it was just nonsense that I stopped caring. I, I mean, it got to the point where I just, people are like, you speak Vietnamese? Or no, not a word. You've been here for X years, not a word. Like I, I was just over it. So take it with what it is. When I go to markets and stuff though, I do speak Vietnamese typically. But when I'm around people more than five minutes, I, I, I don't speak a word. I don't understand nothing. I'm just stupid. You know what I mean? So 
you don't need it to live in Vietnam. Uh, number 15, what does it cost like living in Vietnam compared to the US or UK? Just talked about that. It's like 80% cheaper. Everything's way cheaper. If you're compared to New York, it's 99% cheaper. What is the best way to meet other expats and make friends in Vietnam? Uh, Facebook. Everyone has WhatsApp out here, so make sure you have that installed. But if you want to meet people directly, I would just say go to Saigon. Go to Hanoi. Go to the expat backpack areas. You know, use hostel.com, booking.com, and just look up hostel. Stay at a hostel, and you'll meet hundreds of people. Really cool people. Some a-holes, some good people, some old people, some young people. But that is the best way to meet people. And then from there, let the journey begin, right? What are some must-see attractions in Vietnam? Vietnam is very redundant. I would say, what is that bridge called? Like it has the hands. Like that bridge, I, it's, it's not exciting to see, but it's something to see. Like I think that's kind of cool. There's a cave in Vietnam, the world's largest cave that they just discovered like 15 years ago. I went there like on the first year it opened and it wasn't impressive. It was just a big cave full of trash. I, sorry, Vietnam, but why can't you pick up your own trash? Um, Halong Bay is okay for a day. I, I would never recommend staying in Halong Bay more than two days. Um, what else is there? Hanoi and Saigon. It's all it's all artificial tourism. Like nothing's real. Even like the war museums and stuff. It's just like rebuilt stuff. And it's just, it, it's propaganda at best. And then going to Da Nang. Again, it's not Vietnamese culture though. But going to Da Nang is awesome. The beach there is awesome. Phan Thiet is beautiful. If you're into the countryside kind of life, uh, Da Lat, 100% go to Da Lat. And when you go to Da Lat, there's two parts of Da Lat. There's the actual tourist market area where people we see online and whatnot. And then there's the actual city part. Delot's, a, Delot's actually broken into three parts. But you guys will never see the third part. It has nothing to do with you. I did a wedding where I was actually in it. And it's just, it's where the government people live. The very, very rich people. So it's typically not where Western people go. And if you do go there, they're looking at you like, what, what are you doing here, bro? And that's saying they even speak English. So check out Delot for that. But past that, man, like nothing big, man. Like unfortunately, Vietnam's water is really bad to so go to like Font Thiet or like Vong Tau to go swimming is a horrible idea because you'll just get oil on you and the pollution's so heavy out here like on the ground that is bad so I would check out probably uh, like Halong Bay for a day uh, Da Nang for like a week and just for the beach life and a lot for the farm life are there any cultural customs or taboos I should be aware of when living in Vietnam don't be polite don't be scared to push people don't be uncomfortable yelling for no reason like you have Tourette's <laughs> I'm kind of poking fun of Vietnamese here um, not really like there's not really any taboos if you do something weird as a foreigner Vietnamese just ignore you honestly like there's unless you're attacking the government directly or like slapping a Mao statue or like insulting Ho Chi Minh nobody cares like there's really not a lot of regulation when it comes to that most Vietnamese just look at you like oh he's just a dumb foreigner whatever like we don't care how easy is it to find housing in Vietnam as a foreigner super easy when you first get here just make Vietnamese friends Vietnamese friends there's apps I could tell you the apps but you guys wouldn't know what to do with them because they're fluently Vietnamese and when you call these homeowners to rent their house they're gonna say no immediately because they know you're not Vietnamese and they think there's a process, like a, a nasty process. Renting a house to a foreigner as a Vietnamese citizen is actually a benefit because it gives them a huge tax write-off. Places like Saigon, they don't even have to pay tax, which is really cool. Um, but in Hanoi, there's a tax write-off. Uh, but there are some exceptions. Uh, Halong Bay, you can't legally live in a house. You have to live in a hotel or a hostel kind of registered company. This is because of the post-World War II of foreigners living with Vietnamese women that every area in Vietnam removed that law except Halong Bay, one other city. I don't know the other city's name, I forgot. Um, if you are in Halong Bay, I know there's a couple older people that live there, leave a comment below, like, to have they changed that rule? But back in 2018, this was something when I lived in Halong Bay for five months and there was a bunch of foreigners that were living there too as teachers. We were working at the school called B. And none of us could live in houses. Like I knew people, I knew government people in Halong Bay and I could not pull any strings. So let me know if that changed, but past that, it's super easy to find a house. Just make meet a local friend and they will get you through it. Can I drink tap water in Vietnam? No, it, it's completely nasty. Even boiling, it's not the best thing to do. I do it. Um, my health advice for this is eat like two to three cloves of raw garlic every day. Just, you know, peel it, crunch it, eat it. This takes the metal out of your body. Uh, the problem with Vietnam waters is it's contaminated and has a lot of metals. So the garlic will kind of counter, counteract it. How do I open a bank account in Vietnam? You need to have a work permit and a passport. That's it. It's very easy. I don't recommend it if you can avoid it, but if you have to, there you go. 
What is the nightlife like in Vietnam's major cities? Uh, Saigon has to be one of the wildest party cities in Asia. Saigon District 1, Bui Vinh. Hanoi is quite, it's rather quiet. It's not too intensive. But Saigon is probably where you want to be if you want to party like a rock star. How reliable is the internet in Vietnam for remote work or staying in touch with family and friends? The internet in Vietnam is actually good. I think it's some of the best. Like I can download stuff at like 50 megabytes per second consistently. Like it, it's fast. And it's cheap. I think it's like, comes out to like, when I lived in Lazi, I had to pay per year. Because if you pay for a year up front, you get the modem installed for free. And then you get like two free months. And I think I paid like 1.4 million. So it came out to like $60 a year for internet. For 50 megabytes up and down. It is like free iron. It's, it's insane. Um, are there any safety concerns for women traveling or living in Vietnam? Not really. Vietnamese men are intimidated by Western women. Mostly because you women are probably physically bigger than these men out here. Like Vietnamese men are very small, fragile. And a lot of them aren't even interested in women, if you know what I mean. So, no, you're fine. Like, when, I think Vietnam is one of the safest places for women to be. Like, really. Like, I think out of all of Southeast Asia, the only spot where women that I've talked to women that had issues traveling was in Malaysia. Um, but besides that, like, most of Asia is fine. But Vietnam, definitely, I've never... I've heard things about Thailand. I've heard things about, um, again, Malaysia. But I've never heard anything about Vietnam. Not, not serious. Like, getting your purse snatched and your cell phone taken, sure. But being kidnapped, sold, sold into slavery, stuff like, you know, this crazy stuff. No, not at all. Are there any festivals or cultural events I should experience while living in Vietnam? Uh, Chinese New Year. Vietnam kind of copied the holiday and called it Ted. But that's a really cool thing. A lot of the holidays out here, especially the government ones, are typically relative to government officials, so they don't affect you. And for Vietnamese people, it's just a day off. So I think Tet is one of the bigger ones. Now, if you're in Da Lot, there's a couple extra holidays out there that you can look into. If you make Vietnamese friends, talk to them about it. It's not something that Western people know it, it is, and it's, it's an old custom. It's not, a, it's not a holiday you find on the calendar, let's say it like that. How do I navigate the healthcare system in Vietnam if I ever get sick? Again, if you get sick seriously, go to Thailand. That's my advice, because it's the closest country. If it's just minor shit like medications and stuff, you can buy pharmacies are on the side of the road. Now, mind you, to be a, pharma a pharmacy person, what do you call those people? Like, to be a pharmacy person in Vietnam, you have to go to this class for three months, you get a certification, you can sell drugs. It's like in America, you need to be an MD and you have to go to school for like six years. So six years compared to three months, you can do the math of what the problem is here. If you do buy drugs from these people, check what you're taking because typically what they do is they'll just put pills in a bag and give you a bag and tell you a fee. Make sure you know what you're getting. I, I always look at the package. That, this reminds me of a story back in 2017. A friend of mine was married to Vietnamese. She was pregnant and we went to go get her some prenatal pills. But he was like, hey, because we were coming over to the house. He asked if we'd go pick some up for him. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. So we go to this spot, we grab him, and we found out later that she, they gave her, well, they gave me to give her iron pills, which, which will literally, it's pretty much a forced plan B. And the pharmacy person didn't even know. Like, they never even asked any questions or anything. So be careful. Uh, serious stuff, just go to Thailand, man. If it's basic, minor stuff, sure. Vietnam is fine. Uh, can I easily find Western food? Do you agree with Vietnam? <laughs> Vietnam has the worst international food it doesn't it all tastes vietnamese like it all does pizza uh sushi kimchi all this stuff tastes vietnamese so like you can find western food out here but it doesn't taste western not none of it does people try to say it does shut up like it doesn't i've been to i've been to like over 20 25 30 different spanish spots out here they all taste like it, it tastes like bon mi like it's weird how they can make a burrito taste like bon mi it's weird to me but yeah nothing out here really tastes western uh number 30 we're almost there are there any scams or pitfalls I should watch out for as a tourist or expat in Vietnam? Everything's a scam in Vietnam. My recommendations is don't go to street markets that are next to tourist sites. There's a huge mall by Bui Vinh, uh, the street market. Don't go there. They, they up everything by 50%. Typically, just go like outside the main tourist areas and have your Vietnamese friend show you. And you can, you can buy a shirt for two cents, right? In regards to like, taxis and stuff, use Grab. Never just flag a taxi. Because they will cheat you. They, they will, they, one way or another, they will screw you over. They will find a way. Past that, yeah, there's not much. Like it, The scams in Vietnam are the same as they are in India or Thailand or something. It's just petty theft. What is the education system like in Vietnam? For Vietnamese, it's, it's pay to win. Everybody cheats. Nobody's accurate. I mean, according to the education system in Vietnam, if you compare it to the West, the average GPA 
passing rate in America is it's at like a 65%, I believe it is. So like 45% of students don't graduate or they're just, they're not smart, right? In Vietnam, it's like a 98%. So according to these stats of education, Vietnam is one of the smartest countries in the world. You take that how you want, but Vietnam is a pain to win. Once you become a teacher out here, you'll notice it. Definitely during finals and midterms, you'll start seeing the, the TAs and the managers start giving the test answers to students. They'll let them do open book tests, walk around class asking each other for answers. The speaking test, they'll make sure that they ask, like, hello, what's your name, where are you from, how old are you, like, stupid shit like that. And then they'll give them a, a, an eyelid score of, like, five or six for being able to say, what's your name? So it's pay to win. It's horrible. If you're a foreigner living in Vietnam, having your kids here, homeschool them. For the love of God, homeschool them. How can I volunteer opportunities in Vietnam? Google it. I don't know. What, what would you volunteer? How do I avoid offending locals with my behavior or dress? Act human. Shots fired. Are there any natural disasters or environmental hazards I should be aware of while living in Vietnam? Natural disasters? No. Like earthquakes and tsunami stuff? No, not at all. There's heat waves. In the north, at times, it snows in the north sometimes. It snowed back in like 2018 in Lycho when I was out there. Uh, in regards to environmental hazards, pollution in Vietnam is horrible. Like the ground trash pollution is bad. The air pollution is... Hanoi is one of the dirtiest air polluted cities in Asia. Like it's in the top 10 or something like that. And it's consistent. It's not like, it's not like during the summertime only. It's consistent. Like it'll be raining out here. And it'll still be like 10 times above the breathing acceptable air. Like it's insane. So there's that. And then if you go to oceans and beaches, the ocean's typically full of trash and oil and stuff like that. Like you, you, I don't rec ever recommend anybody swimming in Vietnam oceans. And when it comes to food, most food is grown in dirt where they burn plastic and trash. Uh, basic rice, basic pho, all this stuff has microplastics in it because they burn the trash in the same spot where they grow all this food. Like this is why, this is another reason why I say Vietnam food is, it's healthy on paper, but it is some of the most unhealthy food in Asia. Like Vietnamese food is very unhealthy. And you can just look at the people, the health concerns of Vietnam and what happens to Vietnamese when they hit 40, 45 years old. Most people out here die of cancers. That's actually pretty common. It is relative to sugars, high carb diets, and microplastics and lung cancer. Those are the big ones. And, and it's, you can't help it when that's literally the environment we live in, right? So I would, I would just say probably your biggest hazard as a tourist in Vietnam is the food. I would enjoy it here and there. When you go back home, I would do like a three week fast. Just let your body get rid of it all. How easy is it to travel with pets in Vietnam? It's not too bad. You know, if you go through an airport, it's typical stuff, I guess, I, I don't know. Um, if you're traveling domestically, like on a bus and stuff like that, it could be a little annoying because Vietnam typically overpacks buses and stuff like that. So having a dog in there can be annoying. If you don't control your animal and it's just barking at everything, like you're gonna start annoying everybody. Um, but in general, it's not bad. I wouldn't recommend coming to Vietnam with a pet though. Like wh what are you gonna do with them? Like. The city, look at YouTube videos, like the city's, the traffic's insane. Everything's crowded. Like, wh where would you walk your dog? What would you, don't, just, just leave it with your uncle back home and like come out here and enjoy the trip. I don't understand when people bring their dogs out here. Uh, if you have a cat, that, that's, don't, man. just leave your pets at home. What are some unique and authentic experiences I can have in Vietnam? Meet Vietnamese people. Go home to their hometowns with them. Enjoy their cultures. I think that's the best thing I've ever done. Vietnam, I, I as much as I bash Vietnam, it's beautiful. I've grown up in the culture. My entire life has been Vietnamese culture. And I would say when you move out here, make Vietnamese friends and go out to their hometowns. Enjoy their country life. This is the beautiful part, man. Like the, back in 2018 or 19, I lived with a Hmong family for two months in a Hmong village. I can't explain how crazy and different this was. Like we had nothing. Like our floor was two feet of mud. Like it was insane what we lived through. And I would never take it back. You know, like it was a crazy cool experience. So the best thing you can do is just make Vietnamese friends and, and try to get out of the main cities. Like you're not going to get an authentic experience in Saigon or Hanoi. And I talked about this earlier, how tourist spots in these cities are artificial. They're, you know, they, they fake out to make people feel like the past, you know what I mean? But just go up to the real thing. Like the truth about Vietnam is Vietnam is like 95% farmland in poverty. That's all it is. What you see in the cities is, is not really Vietnam. That's westernization developed with West Asian culture. It, it's an infusion almost, right? So yeah, make local friends. How can I learn about Vietnamese rich history culture while living there? Um, Go to like Hoi An. Go to Da Nang. Go to, what is that city with the old, uh, the old Chinese castle? I did a video on it. I think it is like Hoi An or something. 
But there's a, if you guys are aware, Vietnamese language used to be in Chinese. This is before Vietnam completely separated from Chinese uh, culture. So they changed the language to what you know today is the Latin alphabet with the different tones, right? But that's, that's an old quote. I'll put a picture of something on the screen to show you guys. But go there. Like, you'll learn about the old, old history of Vietnam. Like, we're talking old kings. The theory of the man laid the eggs, and that's how Vietnamese were born. You'll learn about the Chinese integration of culture. You'll learn what Tet actually... Like, Tet's not a Vietnamese holiday. It's a Chinese lunar celebration based off a European calendar or German calendar or something like that. But Vietnam took it, changed it to win something. I forget the full name. And... They, they kind of put their own vibe to it. So is, is Tet a Vietnamese holiday? Sure. But is it originated? No. Like Tet is 100% Chinese. Like even the decorations, the, the colors, the music, the dragon dancing, all this stuff is Chinese. But that is a good way though. Go to that town. Hoi An and Da Nang are two very culturally rich places. Go to Hanoi to see like uh, Ho Chi Minh's life, life. Like you see his house, his compound he used to live in. You can see his graveyard. Those are kind of cool things. Guys, my camera literally caught on fire. So apparently it's too hot here, even inside. So I want to finish up. We just talked about Old Town and what kind of cultural stuff you can see in Vietnam. The last three questions. How do you deal with culture shock in Vietnam? Culture shock in Vietnam, I I personally didn't feel culture shock until I, moved, I went back to America. I, I kind of expected it. For people that aren't used to Asian life and you're just coming here because you want to, I would say the busyness is going to be a culture shock to you because it's very, very busy here, especially when you land in Saigon or Hanoi. And it's just pushy. There's no privacy. There's no like, people don't respect space. So you have to kind of get used to that. And that can be kind of shocking to a lot of people because you just, you just don't have your own space. You know, it's like, it's very uncommon to like people respect your space. And it's not a cultural well, it is a cultural thing, but it's also very packed in a lot of cities. Uh, number 39. Can I travel around Vietnam with just English or should I learn some Vietnamese? We've already talked about this. You don't need to speak really any Vietnamese. It'll help you. Don't get me wrong. It'll speed some things up, but it won't make a difference to the point where your your trip could be drastically changed because you spoke Vietnamese. If anything, you won't impress somebody. If anything, and then that person will forget about you in three seconds. So, you know, you really don't. Like, I, I, I think back these like 11, 12 years living in Vietnam, I could have just never spoken and I would have been 100% okay. Um, and finally, what are some tips for bargaining and shopping in Vietnam? I would just not shop in tourist areas. There's really nothing more to it. I know a lot of people do videos about like bargaining in Vietnam and how to like hustle the pricing. Most people, including Vietnamese, don't go to these tourist areas to deal with this kind of stuff. So we don't deal with it, really. If you're in a tour spot and you are talking the price down, let's say they drop it $5, it still doesn't really matter because they usually mark the price up on a lot of this stuff like 40, 50, 70% sometimes. You understand, to buy... So to give you an idea, in Bid Hoi, there's a couple factories for clothes. Uh, Hugo Boss is out there. Uh, Tommy Hilfiger used to be a factory out there. I think with India, though. But... If you used, if you went outside of here, Vietnamese typically go out there. It's like every Thursday night. And this has been like five or seven years since I've seen this. But going from memory, it's like five or I think it's like Thursday or Wednesday or something like that. All the vendors go out there, Vietnamese, and they buy boxes of clothes. So they're buying these like Kobe Hilfiger defect shirts for like 30 to 50 cents each. And they're selling them for 3 to $5. So if you are buying a, let's say a Calvin Klein shirt, at the market for like twenty dollars, you were already paid nineteen dollars too much. So if you talk it down to fifteen, I mean, good on you, bro. But you're still overpaid. My advice on where to go is just go out where Vietnamese shop. I mean, even go to a supermarket to buy. Like, go to a co-op if you want to buy stuff. It will be. It might not be as cheap, but it'll at least be better quality. But if you're going to a tourist street market where it's notorious for having expats and tourists and stuff like that. You're going to overpay. You're going to waste a more time negotiating. The, the fact that people spend 10, 20 minutes negotiating to get the price down 3 to $10 on something as simple as a shirt is, to me, ridiculous. Like, you just wasted your day. Like, so my advice, if you're going to go shopping, you know you're going to go shopping. You know you need to buy certain things, clothes, whatever it is. Just go to a Vietnamese market. Avoid the backpacking with bid. Uh, in Saigon, you have Bowie Vietnam. There's a market like right outside. 
like right outside the Blue Dead area. It's, it's like a kilometer away next to McDonald's. I would avoid that spot. That place is notorious for robbing people. Vietnamese do not shop there because they know what they do. So avoid all that. But with that being said, guys, we've answered the 40 questions. Sorry for the video change. Camera got on fire, so we're on the iPhone now. But we finished this 40 questions. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. In regards to the teaching, though, I do want to touch on it. If you want to come out here and teach, I know I've talked about the legalities are changing. Check the links below. Check out the ebooks. I've written ebooks that are short to the point that will get you what you need to start teaching out here without all the nonsense. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars going to a live TEFL course. And there's no sense. It's a waste of time in 2024 and beyond because the government's changed so much. So check out the books. If you buy the books, within the books, there's a 20% discount, which is more than what I even offer for a TEFL online. So you can get that, get a book for like whatever it is. If you want to learn activities, how to write lesson plans, how to promote like speaking or anything like that. Check out the books. They all got that discount in there. Get the TEFL book. Have that TEFL done before you come out here. Do not come out to Vietnam without a TEFL trying to do it. It's a waste of time. You won't be able to find a job. It's going to be very hard for them to ship it to you because Vietnam mail service absolutely sucks. So that being said, guys, I think we're good today. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm holding the phone with my right hand. So we're using our left today. So I will see you again.